Hey YouTubers, it's Charlie, and no, you are not dreaming. Stephen Amell totally leaned in for a Felicity kiss in a new Arrow season three promo, so I'll explain what was going on with that. You may have seen it on Twitter last night, but in response, I'm gonna do my top five superhero couples, like from all comics, not just from Marvel and DC. There's also some big casting news too. Rila Fukushima is replacing Devin Aoki as Katana in season three, so I'll explain what happened there with the switch. Important stuff first, if you were on Twitter last night, you may have seen the Elicity Kiss hashtag. It was a little bit mysterious because Arrow has not posted like a new promo for season three in a little while. However, there was a super short video of Oliver almost kissing Felicity. When you zoom in, you see that he's just leaning in really close and whispering something to her. He's almost kissing her, which was enough to birth the Elicity Kiss hashtag. So think of it this way, if you rewind to the season two finale with the Slay took the wrong woman moment, that's basically what was going on. Oliver just ambiguously showing affection and communicating something secretly. There's no real context for the promo scene, so do not take it at face value. The show does a really great job of building the illicity sexual tension without trampling on the future. They're really good about not writing themselves into a corner, but in the spirit of the illicity craziness, here are my top five superhero couples. So this is from both Marvel and DC, but number five, Black Panther and Storm, Marvel's royal couple. Bringing them together was such a huge deal for the Phantom, especially after the Civil War arc. But behind the scenes, it was also a really big thing for Marvel because it connected the X-Men and the Avengers franchises, basically Marvel's two biggest teams. And because the characters were both born as royals in their respective societies, it was kind of like Marvel's royal wedding. They've always had a lot of fun with epic weddings. I think the wedding of Jean Grey in 1994 was the next biggest thing in comics after the death of Superman and Batman's Nightfall saga. Cyclops and Jean Grey were never my favorite comic book couple though. Recently, things have not gone so hot for Storm and Black Panther. The X-Men vs. Avengers arc was basically the end of their marriage, so you can blame the Phoenix for that one. But onto number four, Superman and Wonder Woman in the New 52 universe. I feel like as controversial as the New 52 reboot was for DC's titles, getting Superman and Wonder Woman together was a huge, huge deal. They'd already done it in Kingdom Come, but that was an alternate universe story and not really considered part of the canon of the main versions of the characters. The New 52 reboot was basically meant to solve all those continuity problems, though. Jeff Johns basically put everything into a single continuity, so thus Wonder Woman and Superman became like one of the first new big things of that. You can let me know whether you love them together or totally hate the idea, but it's like whenever Marvel rebooted Spider-Man so that he wasn't married to Mary Jane anymore. You know, Superman was not married to Lois Lane. It is kind of hard to believe they hadn't gotten these two big characters together before. Essentially, they're both alien gods who are totally undateable, you know, below a certain tier of superhero. It's like, if you're not indestructible, you will not be able to be in a sexual relationship with either one of those characters. I remember whenever I read Kingdom Come for the first time and saw Wonder Woman pregnant, all I could think about was what are those babies' powers going to be like? I know their powers appear similar, but Wonder Woman has a much more celestial origin story. So let me know what you think that Superman and Wonder Woman's baby would be like. But onto number three, Arrow and Black Canary from the comic books. I know Arrow teased it a little, but since they're telling an origin story, there is no way Oliver is going to get married in the second season. Stephen Amell would not stand for it. It was a lot of fun in the comics, though. And the interesting thing is, is that, you know, as Oliver has tried to become more of a hero on Arrow, in the comics, it was actually kind of his downfall that was the end of his marriage to Black Canary. It happened after Oliver killed Prometheus, which was obviously super dark, but that was only after Prometheus killed Roy Harper's daughter and maimed him. That was just a string of tragedies. I'd be surprised if any marriage could survive that. That whole arc was a terrible story for Roy Harper, so nobody let Colton Haynes read it. He will just get so depressed. But on to number two, Batman and the Selina Kyle Catwoman. If you ever read the Earth 2 comics, the Huntress was the daughter of Batman and Selina Kyle. Her name was Helena Wayne. That was an alternate universe though. The version that Arrow did was Helena Bertinelli. So Batman and Catwoman never got married officially in the comics. Like they were never official, but they had sex so many times that you would think they were living together. Rule number one of Batman relationships though is nothing lasts forever, even if you have access to a Lazarus pit. They did get together in the New 52 comics, but their relationship is still described as being estranged. Which basically means you broke up, but you still booty call each other with the bat signal on occasion. I'll be really interested to see what kind of relationship the Gotham TV show gives to Bruce Wayne and Selina Kyle. Essentially, they're both about 13 years old, so they'll probably just be like really good friends that help each other out. But my number one comic book ship, Gambit and Rogue. The thing that really made me fall in love with the two of them together was the 90s cartoon. I watched that way more than I read the comics of the 90s. 
One of the fun things about the two of them was that they were always this pair of lovable scoundrels. Like, they weren't royalty like Storm and Black Panther, so they seemed more like people that you would want to hang out with. One of the problems with Alo superheroes is that it seems like the more powerful you get, the less interesting you are to talk to. Gammon and Rogue were so much fun that you would just forget about the problems that Apocalypse and Magneto were causing, and Mr. Sinister. Lately, the comics have not been so nice to their ship. Gambit basically turned traitor, joined Apocalypse as one of his four horsemen, and then was working for Mr. Sinister. They have been teasing a reconciliation in Gambit's spinoff comic, but that remains to be seen. Rule number one of any comic book couple, nothing lasts forever. But rule number two is that everything comes back around eventually. So even if people break up, they'll totally get back together at some point. That's always the fan's dilemma of getting what you want. As a superhero, nothing is permanent. So it means that, you know, if two characters get together, ultimately they're going to get broken up somehow. One minute you're riding high, you have everything, and then something jumps out and stabs you in the back. A villain returns like Malcolm Merlin just to tie it back to Arrow. You start to get distracted just because your girlfriend's face shines so bright you can't see anything else. You don't see Count Vertigo sneak into the city, and you don't see the threat of the League of Assassins and Ra's al Ghul in the distance. I mean, even as a fan of the show, that's one of the reasons why I totally don't want Oliver and Felicity to like completely get together. I feel like it would kill a lot of the tension, and Oliver would be completely distracted from taking care of the real problems. They will always be a family though, in the sense that Team Arrow is a family of people that deeply, deeply care about each other. Let me know if you agree though, I feel like it's an unspoken rule that superheroes and even supervillains do not get to have traditional families. They can have children, they just can't have normal relationships. For instance, Batman has Talia and Damien, but that totally did not end well. Oliver in the comics has Connor, and they have a terrible relationship. So think about it this way, if Oliver and Felicity ever did get together, do you think it would absolutely kill the show? You have to remember, the minute he started having sex with Black Canary in season 2, everything went south. There's no wrong answer, but I feel like not knowing how they're going to end up is way more exciting than seeing it happen at the risk of being super disappointed after. So moving along, more current news. Rila Fukushima has replaced Devin Aoki as Katana in Arrow Season 3. It's all because of scheduling conflicts, and whenever I say that, usually what that means is that actors get signed to a contract for a specific period of time that the show expects to film during the year, and then shooting days get moved around till they overlap with actors' other commitments. So either Devin Aoki had like another movie going on whenever she needed to film her katana scenes or vice versa, but either way, now we have a Wolverine actress. I already did a big video explaining Katana's backstory in the comics, so I'll link that in the description, but the idea is that the show will use her in the Hong Kong flashbacks and in the present. Hopefully she'll teach Oliver how to use a sword. The interesting thing is, is that usually when characters on the show go from the past to the present, it has something to do with the big villain arc. It's like Black Canary and Slade in Season 2. They were all on the island together, and then they were all in present day together. So this season, Ra's al Ghul is the big bad. So if Katana is going to show up in the past and in the present, it's probably going to have something to do with him and the League of Assassins. That also makes me wonder if the League of Assassins has something to do with Amanda Waller's operation in Hong Kong in those flashbacks. They do a good job of putting clues about the big villain arc in the season premieres every year, so be sure to keep your eyes peeled for things that connect Katana, Oliver, Amanda Waller and Ra's al Ghul in that first episode. And Fukushima is a great action actress, so you should get really excited. She's going to be awesome on the show. Speaking of crossover characters and comebacks, there's another Tommy flashback scene this season for Hong Kong. The idea is that Tommy is there for some unrelated reason and Oliver almost runs into him. That makes me wonder if Malcolm Merlin is going to show up in the flashbacks too. The timelines get a little fuzzy, but you have to remember it this way. Malcolm Merlin was in Starling while Oliver was gone. Malcolm Merlin was in the League of Assassins while Oliver was still like really young, way before he ever got stranded on the island. So if Merlin's in Hong Kong, he will have already left the League of Assassins. I'm actually a little frustrated I haven't seen John Barrowman in any of the promos yet. Hopefully they're going to probably post one pretty soon, hopefully he'll be in that one. Supposedly they're going to be posting an official version of the Elicity Kiss promo that leaked online, so hopefully you guys will get a chance to see that in nice high quality. Aside from Merlin though, the only other character I'm expecting to see in any of these new promos between now and the premiere are Ray Palmer, like Brandon Routh's character. They'll probably try to explain him just a little bit better. While we wait for that super high quality promo to post, I'm going to be working on a new Marvel video for Avengers Age of Ultron. There's been some Captain Marvel talk. They've been talking about taking her out of the movie, just the way they introduce her. So you can click here to get that. I'll post that tonight, I'll have the annotation whenever it posts. And you can click here to get my Katana backstory video to learn about her from the comics. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you guys tonight. High fives.